Hey, welcome to this mini tutorial series for the rookies. My name is Paulo Munoz, and I'm going to show you some really cool tips and tricks inside Substance 3D Painter so you can texture your mid mat 4 character. Let's go ahead and jump straight into it. All right, so here we are inside Substance 3D Painter, and this is the sample that I created for the mid mat 4 contest. And I'm going to be able to show you some really cool techniques, like I said, uh, based on what I have here. The only reason um, I want to show you or, or mention this at the beginning is because whatever I'm going to show you, any generic sort of uh, technique can be applied to absolutely anything that you want. So it doesn't have to be like these sort of hand painted details or or graphics or anything like that. Even though the techniques that I'm going to show you are you know are great for this type of you know, treatment or, or stylization, uh, you can apply it to absolutely anything that you want. So in this first video, I'm going to show you how to deform the surface, kind of like a like a control way of sculpting what is already there. So things like like the visor, for example, or things like this. Uh, we're going to use displacement and height maps and a couple of really cool techniques that in future videos we can also capitalize on and, you know, take advantage of. So let's go ahead and jump straight into it. So I'm going to go ahead and load up something that is not as finished as this one. All right, so here is my static project. And as you can see, I have already some deformation happening. Um, but if I just go ahead and turn off my folder that says base deformation, uh, and I'm just going to also isolate the helmet or the head just by holding the Alt and Q on your keyboard, you can uh, go into this sort of like focus mode or solo mode. So I'm going to turn this off and you see it is the, the basic, um, you know, head of mid -map. So this is the same thing for the body and well, there's no much deformation here in the base, but in an effort to keep these uh, videos a little bit shorter, um, I'm going to concentrate on the head because I think that's the, you know, the best way of showing you the technique and then obviously you can apply it to the rest. So again, it's just a single folder that is deforming the entire helmet. And the cool thing is that every single detail is in a different layer. So I have control over, let's say, the, the details that are kind of like in the face like like so and another folder that is uh, controlling the deformations of the helmet in my case right and within those folders i can also go ahead and change things like the mouth guard or the straps or you know the the visor frame the the helmet top all of these things so this is what i'm going to show you how to create so we're not going to focus on necessarily on the texture inside of things just yet we're going to add any you know additional high detail or any displacement details that you want to then use in the texturing so let's go ahead and collapse this and i'm going to hide this for a second so we can start fresh i'm going to also go into solo mode as well and let's go ahead and start with the basics. So if I create a new layer, that new layer would come with a bunch of channels, right? So color, metal, all the good stuff. I'm going to go ahead and press the Alt key and click on hide. Uh, by the way, I should mention that I also have the ambient occlusion channel, which by default is not enabled. So if you want to have the ambient occlusion enabled, all you have to do is go to the texture set settings and click on this plus icon. I don't have it here because like I said, I already have it, but I'm going to delete it just to show you. So if I delete it, it disappears. So this is kind of like the more default uh, version of the channels but if you want to have the ambient occlusion you can click on this icon click on ambient occlusion and it would be there all right let's go back to what i was saying so we have this first uh, fill layer and we only have the hide enabled right so if i go ahead and press this in and out you see how i'm just deforming and kind of like inflating or deflating the entire helmet so i'm, I'm controlling the hide of the of the helmet i'm calling it helmet but just because it is my project but you know in your case it's just going to be your face or your head right so i'm going to set this back to zero because if you start moving the height um, slider and you don't see any deformation is because you don't have the uh, displacement enabled so let's go to the shader settings in here and you'll see at the bottom if i scroll down let's go ahead and expand this a little bit more um, we have the displacement and tessellation enabled. So you might have this already enabled by default and nothing would happen unless you change the scale. So if I set this to zero, right, you see it's still enabled. Let's go back to properties. I can push this any way I want to and you won't see any deformation because there is no, uh, there's no scale into that displacement. So let's go back to shader settings. Just make sure that this is enabled and for the scale, we're going to go with uh, 0.1. You can increase this, but I think 0.1, even 0.05 is, is more than enough. I think 0.1 uh, works just fine. Now, the tessellation and the, specifically this subdivision count determines the, the smoothness of the displacement. So if I enable my, um, my visor thing, let's go get closer here. You see it's relatively smooth, right? Uh, but if I change this to something like 1, we're just going to get like this distorted... Um, you know polygons and we can go ahead and go to the display properties here or display settings and scroll down to where it says the mesh wireframe so i'm going to click on that one and you'll see it is um well it's kind of hard to see but it's basically taking all of these polygons around here and it's just pushing them outside so there's not much um there's not much smoothness because there's not enough polygons so if i take this subdivision count let's just turn this back off 
uh, you don't have to follow along by the way this is just like covering what um what is happening behind the scenes so you can increase that and you see how it increases the resolution so everything looks pretty smooth so i'm going to keep it simple at 16 which is uh, pretty decent uh, you can go higher than that but i wouldn't recommend it and this is a relatively good set of settings so that we can work with the next technique all right let's go back to the properties field and now let's turn off my base information so we're going to create something similar not the same but similar um, and again we can just use the the height map all right let's set this back to uh, zero and just so that you can visualize what you're doing i would recommend that you enable color temporarily and add any random bright color something that you can see i'm going to go for this uh, bright red all right so now we can go ahead and start working with something like the visor for example so i'm going to click on the drop down here uh, to create a black mask and then obviously everything disappears and in the magic one we're going to create a paint layer all right so that means that i can take any paint brush let's use this archive inca i can start doing this and i'm revealing this color all right let's undo that let's go ahead and click on this icon right here to expand this this tool set and do it again i'm going to enable symmetry and i'm also going to hide this line this is just a personal preference so i'm going to don't show that intersection but we still have uh, symmetry so that is going to make it a lot easier and you know faster to work with now the next step will be to select um, a nice brush so i'm going to go for something simple just a hard basic brush this one is pretty good and i'm going to switch from the paint brush to this path tool all right so the path tool is going to give you a lot more control and it's going to make things non-destructive so let's go ahead and click somewhere like here and let's go ahead and click here and you see that it is pretty soft and it's not necessarily using the the brush that I have, um, that is because it remembered the previous setting. So I'm just gonna make sure that while I'm still kind of like creating the path, I'm gonna click back onto the basic heart and you see it, it gets updated. If it is too thick, don't worry, this is the whole point. Um, I'm showing you this technique because you can go to the size of that brush and you can adjust it on the flight and you can continue, right? So let's go ahead and do something like this. I'm gonna try to replicate something similar to what I had in mind, I mean, there's not gonna be the same. Um, yeah, something like this, and we can just go ahead and use these points to rearrange it. So let's push this up a bit, get this closer. And if you want to get in this, uh, using this technique or using this tool, if you want to get like sharper corners, like let's say for here, what you can do is select the point. So you can select this one and you can go at the top and click on this icon. So that makes it like a, like a sharp corner. Um, let me just show you with a smaller radius so that it's easier. Or you can also double click the point. So if you double click the point, it's going to give you the same uh, sort of result so i'm going to double click on that one and double click on this one as well maybe add an extra point so you can just hover over and add a new one and double click on this one just to make it sharp and let's go ahead and play around with the with the placement of these points and this is the, the good thing about it it's non-destructive so at any point you can come back and play around with the with the position now let's go ahead and increase the size or like the thickness of it all right i think that's pretty good all right and that's it let's go ahead and press enter um that basically locks that path in there now after you press enter if you start clicking again it will create another path let's press enter and the cool thing is that although these paths live within the same sort of uh, paint layer if you open up the path you can actually select them individually so i can select this path too i can hide it or i can delete it right so this is um, a very convenient way of working in non-destructive workflows all right so now that we can see kind of like the pattern that we created we can just go ahead and click on the um, on this layer right let's go ahead and turn off the color now and we're going to use the height to push this forward right so you can see we're literally deforming the um the mesh we're just pushing these things out right uh, but it still looks a, a bit jagged here um and that is just because of the resolution of course you can go back to the shader and keep pushing this forward but instead i'm going to show you something else that uh, doesn't require you to increase the the amount of tessellation so let's say that this is a, a pretty decent you know thickness for the visor i'm going to stick with that so what we need to do is soften the, the mask a little bit because we use this basic hard brush. So let's go ahead and click on the mask. And if I press the Alt key on my keyboard and click on the mask, I'm gonna be able to see the mask. And you see, it's pretty sharp. And here's what's happening. When you use this placement and you have this much contrast between black and white, um, it's gonna be you know pretty hard to create a smooth transition. So all we have to do is, let's go ahead and click on the paint and we're gonna put on top another uh, effect. So let's click on the magic one add filter click on filter and let's scroll down to sorry not down at the top where it says blur and that basically is going to blur the line now it's not going to be that intense so i just need to blur it slightly so that this edge right here is not pure black and white but there's a little bit of a gray in between so i'm just going to push this like so and you see this is still pretty decent and let's go ahead and test that out and you see now it is pretty smooth we can go ahead and increase that if you wanted to be a little bit more like so 
and that is pretty clean. And obviously you have the ability to go back and play around with the depth, right? Now that we have the, the smoothness happening. All right, so as you can see, this is pretty easy. And what I've done for mine is just that I, I kept everything in a separate layer or like a separate uh, folder so that I can control things individually. And I would encourage you to do the same thing so that then we can take advantage of things like the anchor points. So before we move forward and you know, I'm getting ahead of myself, let's go ahead and do something more uh, intense like this bit right here, right? Uh, so for that, we can just go ahead, let's turn this back on. We can go ahead and create a new layer. Again, same thing. I'm going to hold the Alt key to isolate the high channel. I'm also going to give it a color so that we can, again, see what I'm doing. Different color doesn't really matter. And this time, instead of using the path tool, I'm going to create a, an alpha, or we can use an alpha from this um, set of alphas here. It doesn't matter. Um, I'll, I'll show you both anyway. So I'm going to click on a black mask. And I'm going to click on Add Fill. So the Add Fill obviously is different than the paintbrush or the paint layer. And I can just drop anything that I want. And let's select something like the Arrowhead Smooth. And I'm going to drag and drop it into the grayscale. So now this is being applied to the entire head. So I need to just go ahead and change the tiling just to change the, you know, the size of it. And if I don't want to repeat this or I don't want to have multiple arrowheads, I can just change it in the UV Wrap from Repeat to None. So it's just a single one. So this becomes a little bit tedious to just do this and try to find um, the right placement for these. So another thing that you can do, and this is another reason I wanted to show you, is that you'll notice that I created the fill layer, then I added the uh, the mask, then added the fill, then I drag and drop. So if you want to save all that steps, um, let's go ahead and delete that. What I'm going to do is simply take the one that I want to use, drag it on top, and when I let go, it's going to ask me what I want to do with this. So I want this to be my mask, so I'm going to click on mask, and that automatically creates the fill layer, the, the mask itself, and it adds the arrowhead into the fill uh, for the mask. So that's pretty convenient. Now, this little square that you see here, that is essentially the, the projection or the warp projection. I'll cover that in a second. But let's go back to the fill layer and let's set this up the way that we had it. So just the height map and color, we're going to go for, you know, something like purple or whatever. And that's it. We now have the height control and the color. So let's push this forward a bit. And let's go ahead and take the arrowhead. And this square right here, you see it's set to uh, warp projection. It allows you to click and drag it, right? We can also press the letter E on your keyboard and you can rotate things around. Uh, it's the same thing as clicking on these icons. I'm just used to press W for movement uh, or like translation, uh, E for rotation and um, R for scale. So you can do the same thing, but you can just click on this one. So let's say uh, I want to do something like this. I want to do this very quickly because this is not the one that I want to use. And uh, let's push it forward. Like so and that's it if for some reason you move things and you don't see it like this is because these arrows these green arrows this is the projection distance so you can increase that or you can just push things back again closer to the surface uh, but if you want to you can go to the projection depth here and you can increase that depth right so there's multiple ways of doing the same thing it's just that uh, depending on what you you want to you know, you want to do, this might be a, a better way. Um, now, if for some reason, let's say uh, you rotate things like so, and I don't know, like this. And when you look at it, when you look at the plane, it's not really what it should be, right? What you can do is click on this icon right here, and this is the surface tool. So if you click on that one, it allows you to click, and it basically is going to um, drag this along the surface, or along the normals of the polygons. So this is pretty handy to kind of like reset the, the projection of it. And that's it, really. There's not much to it. I'm just going to keep this simple. I'm going to push this one here, even though this is not the one I'm going to use. And that's it. So we now have this, again, in a separate layer. We can turn off the color and we can play around with this. Maybe push that in or whatever, just to create a different detail. And the next thing that I want to show you is that if you want to maintain that sort of level of smoothness that we created for the, for the edges of the, of the visor, and let's go ahead and click on the previous mask and also on the arrowhead. Um, what I can do is I'm going to hold the Alt key, click on the blur and drag it on top. So this is going to make a duplicate, an exact duplicate of what we had in here. So you see it is pretty smooth now, right? And again, we have the, the ability to go ahead and change it and, you know, go back to the, the actual uh, layer or the fill layer and we can push this to a different uh, different area. So this is what I'm saying that it is very, very convenient um, to set this up first in this way so that we have multiple layers and then we can go ahead and, and adjust them later. Now to wrap up this video, I'm just going to show you how to do the proper uh, visor because that's a, a bit more complex um, and it's obviously sticking out quite a bit more. And then I'm going to show you the reason why uh, I'm setting things up like this so that we can use anchor points later. So let's go ahead and delete this one. 
and I'm gonna bring in an alpha that I created in Photoshop. So here I am in Photoshop, and I created these three alphas just to test things out. Um, I think the one that I ended up with is this one right here. So you can do something similar in just a black and white image, and this one has a little bit of a gradient as well. So that creates that, that effect. So let's go back in here. I'm gonna take the PSD file that I save, and I'm gonna drag it into my library. Doesn't matter in which one it is, just drag it in there. You're gonna get this pop-up, and you need to identify these, uh, whatever you're dragging as either a alpha color loot um, environment or texture. So this is an alpha. So I'm going to click on an alpha. And in here, you can decide if you want to add it to the current session, to the current project, which is my MinMat 4, or to the library of your assets. So I'm going to click on import in the current session, like so. And here we go. I already had it in this project. So it's just a duplicate of the same. And I'm going to do exactly the same thing that I showed you with the previous alpha. I'm going to drag and drop it in there, make it an alpha. So now we have the fill layer which I'm going to straight away isolate the, the height and the color. Let's go for a different color and let's go ahead and push the height. OK, so that is pretty good. All right, let's go back to the alpha and we can manipulate this in exactly the same way that I just showed you before. We can maybe scale it and rotate it. So I'm going to go for um, maybe scale it down a bit. All right, let's say something like this. This is pretty good. And the projection distance is also working fine. I'm going to push it a bit more. And the reason I like to choose a, a color is to visualize what the alpha is doing. So you see the, the alpha is pretty strong. It's, it's pretty much a, a white color around here. And then it sort of like fades into black. That's why you also have that, that nice fade in the color. And again, the color doesn't really matter. We're not going to focus on that. Let's go ahead and turn that off now. And I'm going to go ahead and take this height and I'm going to push it all the way. All right. So this is the maximum height that I can achieve or like the displacement that I can achieve. Right. And you see it is not as as long as my other visor. So if I bring that again, you see how this is like kind of like going beyond uh, what is allowed. And that is because I'm using levels to control the height. So let's go ahead and do that. So I want to control the, the height channel, right? And the height channel is obviously part of this fill layer, not necessarily the, uh, the alpha, right? Or the, or the mask. So make sure that you select the actual fill layer. And I'm going to click on this magic one and create a levels. So now, these levels allows you to control the base color, any channel that you want. And you can select the, the channel that you want to affect from this dropdown. So I'm going to click on the, uh, the high channel. That's the one that we want to affect. And just without doing anything else, I'm just going to push this, uh, sorry, the white color like so. Right. And you see just by doing that, I'm just exaggerating kind of like the maximum amount of high that I can have. OK, so that is kind of like what I want to go for. And you can just, you know, play around with the with the mid values, I would, wouldn't recommend necessarily to do that. I'm going to reset it and just use the, the white color, the white uh, little flag in here. All right, so that is pretty good. And you can do this, like I said, with absolutely anything that you want. Um, in fact, let me just show you some really cool, I'm just branching out, but I'm something uh, that is pretty good. So if you take this uh, fill layer and let's say duplicate it by Control D, it will duplicate the same thing. We can push it down. But this time, I'm going to replace this with all the settings and everything that I've set up with a new, um, a new image. Let's take this uh, card space in there. All right. And I'm going to scale it down. And I'm going to use the surface tool. Right. So you see, it sort of like inherits the, uh, the, the extreme um, height that I have in this layer. Right. But also the, the levels. So the first sort of like uh, level is being given by the height of this layer. And then I'm just taking the levels and I'm increasing that a little bit. Anyway, let's go back and delete that. All right. So that is pretty cool. But we also need to maintain that nice smoothness around. So let's go ahead and do the alt drag blur on top. So that creates a nice blur. So everything is nice and clean. Um, you know, again, we can play around with this, but I think this works quite well. All right, so obviously I did a few more things for mine. Um, let me just show you. So I have this other section right here, and it's kind of like hard to, to see, but you maybe you're hitting the light. Um, yeah, it's hard to see, but there's a little bit of a deformation here because I didn't want like a perfect rounded head. Um, I just wanted something a little bit more interesting. So the, the rest of the details are done in the same way. The only one that is probably slightly different is the strap, and I'm going to show you how I've done that. So the strap, instead of having a single layer, it has actually a folder. So you see this one right here. So the strap is made out of two uh, layers. So the first one is the one that gives me my, ba my basic um, you know, height. This is the one that determines how high that strap is going to be, just in the same way that I just show you, right? Exactly the same. And then the second one is using an anchor point 
I'm going to open up this mask again. You see, this is the anchor point. And don't worry, I'm going to cover this in future videos. But this is basically what it's doing. I'm referencing the, the mask that I created. So this area right here with an anchor point. And then I'm creating a new layer, right? And I'm just referencing that anchor point. So whatever I put in here is going to be added just in this section. So if I go ahead and press the Alt key, and let's turn these two things off. You see, this is the pattern that I'm creating for those kind of like um, ridges or lines in the straps. Um, but if I go ahead and turn on this fill, which is the reference, it's going to constrain those details to the anchor point. And don't worry, if I'm just going a little bit too too fast and you're not familiar with anchor points, I'm going to cover this in the, in the next video. So don't worry too much about it. I just wanted to show you why it is important to keep things kind of like separate in, in different layers. So just to add to that concept, let's go ahead and do one anchor point in here. Um, and this is what I'm going to do in, in, the next, uh, in the next video in more detail. But basically, I can take this helmet, right, this helmet on top. I can add an anchor point later on. So now I have this so that I can reference this specific mask again. And I can add a new layer. And let's make this a red color. Let's go ahead and add a black mask, a fill layer. Like I said, I'm doing this very, very fast, but I'll cover it in the next video. So I'm going to find the, the anchor point that I created. So helmet top to mask, right? And if I hold the Alt key to access this mask, you see it's exactly the same thing, right? So that means that I can change the color in this, uh, let's say to blue, in this layer, which is different from the layer that is giving me the height, right? So I have total control. In fact, let's just isolate just the color. Right? So in one layer, I have the color for that visor. And in another one, I have just the, the height for it. So it is separate in two layers. Now, you can obviously take this layer and change the color and add color here. But what's cool about this is that you can change whatever you want. Let's say, um, let's go ahead and move this slightly to the top. And as I move this, you see that the mask of the color, because it is referencing the, the height map, is actually going with it. Right, so um, it is a fantastic way to create this non-destructive workflow. Now, obviously, I can just go ahead and take this this mask and I can adjust it. But this is what I'm going to show you in the next video. So that is pretty much it, right? So if you want to follow along, what I would recommend is that you create all the height difference or, or displacement details first in separate layers for you know one layer for each one of the, the details that you want to have. And then we're going to go ahead and use anchor points to reference those details and basically add the textures. All right, I'll see you in the next video.